Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, Pete Eredondo, the police chief for the Uvalde School District, is officially on administrative leave. What parents and community members are saying now about the school shooting investigation. And taking a look outside, it's uh, smooth sailing on those roadways. We're going to be checking uh, Mike's forecast here in just a bit. And good morning. It's Thursday, June 23rd. Such a pleasure being here on set with Stephanie. Yeah, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. How are you this morning? Doing well, doing well. Good. It was a little warm, a little humid, but yeah. of course, we're going to check in with Mike to see what he has for us. Yeah. However, it's less humid this morning. I agree. It's yeah. much more. You open the door. <laughs> it's not, it. it's, it's not still like a humid. humid though. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's still humid, but it's not like the humidity is pushing back at you. Yes, like so, yesterday <clears> morning. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's dropped down considerably. Now, uh, also, we did not quite creep up to 100 yesterday. Stayed at 98. It was still hotter than hot, though. I mean, boy, it just it almost felt hotter yesterday. This morning, we are starting off. Got a lot of clear skies out there right now. We'll see a few of our morning clouds develop. 79 right now. 81 Canyon Lake. 78 at Stinson and. Lotus at 76 degrees, but then look at these numbers. Yesterday, we were up at 72 for a dew point temperature, and that's obviously way up there on the scale, so we're much closer to that threshold line of 60. Uh, yeah, this is really good. Look at Bernie's stage, 61. So, like I said, it is not bad when you step outside. Humidity is not going to be a huge issue over the next couple of days, so it'll be somewhat lower like this in the mornings and then dropping down in the afternoons. That usual cycle we go through. Mold is on the low side, however, it did go up from the previous day's reading. 92 at noon, and yep, 100 for a high temperature today. Still, I think, you know, one or two of those pop up showers, there are a couple of them around yesterday, and there'll be one or two of them out there, out there today. Now, Good news, bad news, bad news. It's going to get hotter this weekend. Good news, we're still looking at finally a break in this weather pattern and some rain and, uh, well, cooler temperatures by next week. So, yeah, you're going to want to hear this forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Jonathan. We look forward to it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Well, now to more developments this morning in the Uvalde School Massacre investigation. The school police chief is now off the job as a new lawsuit is filed demanding more transparency in the investigation. This morning, the embattled school police chief in Uvalde, Texas, has been placed on administrative leave. Bravo. It's about time. He should never be allowed to work in law enforcement again. As more law enforcement agencies face criticism for their response to the massacre at Robb Elementary last month. We deserve the truth and we deserve answers and we deserve them now. Some critics now demanding P. Arredondo resign after learning that he entered the school just minutes after the gunman. But for more than an hour, he and his officers delayed entry into the classroom where 19 students and two teachers were killed. Arredondo has said he did not consider himself in charge at the time the massacre was unfolding. Multiple agencies also responded, including the Uvalde Police Department, the Texas Department of Public Safety, U.S. Border Patrol and the U.S. Marshal Service. And now State Senator Roland Gutierrez is suing the Texas Department of Public Safety after the agency denied his request for records related to the shooting. I want to know where the officers were on site, where they situated themselves, who they were listening to, which orders they were taking, uh, body cam information if it's necessary. On Monday, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety testified in front of state lawmakers. The officers had weapons. The children had none. Stephen McCraw said his agency's investigation found the response led by Arredondo was an abject failure. But Senator Gutierrez wants to know why McCraw's troopers also failed to act sooner. We found out that there was 91 DPS troopers, all Operation Lone Star, including their commanders. Twelve of them were in that hallway for periods of time and apparently listened to no one other than was walking in and out of there. The Texas Department of Public Safety did not immediately respond to the lawsuit. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And today, more than 1,000 Texas McDonald's restaurants will be participating in a fundraiser to help support the Uvalde community. That is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 10% of all the sales at participating McDonald's will be donated to the Rob School Memorial Fund and Ronald McDonald House Charities in San Antonio. Customers can participate in that fundraiser by ordering lunch for dine-in, carry-out at the drive-thru on the McDonald's app or through McDelivery. You can find more information on this article on our website at kset.com. 
And the sentencing trial for the Parkland school shooter Nicolas Cruz is set to start July 6th. A jury has not yet been seated, but once elected, jurors will reportedly hear from nearly 2,000 witnesses. They will then decide whether to recommend the death penalty or send Cruz to prison for life. Now, Cruz pleaded guilty to the 2018 shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, where 17 people were shot and killed. The official summer travel season is underway and it's off to a bad start. Since the first official day of summer on Tuesday, more than 1,000 U.S. flights have been canceled. In addition, the tracking website FlightAware reports more than 3,400 have been significantly delayed. The FAA is blaming thunderstorms in the New York, D.C. metro areas. One in every seven flights departing from the Newark and LaGuardia airports in metro New York were canceled. It was a similar story for D.C. metro airports, including Reagan, National, Dulles, and Baltimore. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg had asked airlines to improve their reliability this summer. And today, the January 6th committee will hear from the former Justice Department officials who faced down a campaign from Donald Trump to overturn the presidential election results. Now, the officials are also expected to testify about a bizarre challenge from within their own ranks. The testimony today will aim to show how Trump tried to leverage the authorities of federal executive branch agencies in pursuing his claims of election fraud. Now, you can watch those proceedings in an ABC special report scheduled for two this afternoon right here on KSAT 12. And time now, 436 and 78 degrees for now. And still ahead, the cost of airline tickets is getting higher. Trust me, I've looked at them myself, <laughs> but there are some hidden fees you can avoid. We'll explain what you need to know and what you need to look out for. And it's going to be a big night for the San Antonio Spurs as they get ready for the NBA draft. We're going to have a preview. And a quick look at the roads with TransSky looking there at I-35 at Judson. Things are moving right now. Nice and smooth. And taking a look outside at Live Cam 437, 78 degrees. It felt humid, but it's not as humid as it was yesterday. Of course, we'll be learning more about the weather forecast with Mike. tonight when the NBA holds its 2022 draft and that's because the Spurs have four picks to continue rebuilding the silver and black after missing a playoffs for franchise record three straight seasons and what puts the pressure on general manager Brian Wright so much is that three of those picks are in the first round starting at number nine there are a number of uh, scenarios that could happen including trading one or more of those picks to move up if you can't tell, I look a little disheveled. No haircut, no sleep. Um, and that's, that's all of our group. You know, when you, when you have one pick to prepare for, sometimes two, you know, you're trying to do the work to figure out, you know, who could be there at your pick, obviously who you like at the pick, and, and what could happen around you. Now you factor that in for four picks, it's a lot more work. There are several people that Spurs have their eye on. You can read, read more about the possible picks on the sports page over at ksat.com. Now, the NBA draft officially starts at 7 tonight. It will be at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. You can watch it all live right here on KSAT 12. And from the court to the diamond, after getting roughed up on Friday night, the Texas A&M Aggies looking for revenge against the Sooners. Yesterday, with a spot in the College World Series finals on the line. Bottom of the first, Sooners. Jimmy Crooks at the plate with two men on. This is the first pitch he sees, and he likes it. The deep shot to right clears the bases and puts the Aggies in a 3-0 hole early. The Sooners got a career performance from pitcher David Sandlin. He put the A&M bats to sleep. 12 strikeouts over seven eight innings with five hits and only one run given up. The Sooners eliminate the Aggies from the College World Series 5-1. Now the much anticipated showdown between the top two teams in the United Soccer League's Western Conference standings will take place tomorrow night. That's when San Antonio FC travels to Colorado Springs to face the switchbacks to decide who takes over the top spot. Now right now the switchbacks own that distinction following their win this past week against Indy. San Antonio FC played Oakland routes to a 1-1 draw to Toyota Field to drop them to second overall. The match is scheduled for 9 p.m. in San Antonio time tomorrow. 
Good luck to San Antonio FC. Good luck. Absolutely. The best of luck to them. Yes. It's 442 and it's 78 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to show you some ways to avoid hidden fees if you're planning to travel by air this summer. And welcome back. It is 445. A California man was attacked by a shark while surfing off the California coast. ABC's Will Carr has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a shark encounter off the California coast, leaving one man with significant injuries. Good Samaritans captured on this surveillance video rushing the swimmer to shore. We had to quickly cut his wetsuit off of him and open it all up and then try to, you know, apply the tourniquets to each limb and also to his abdomen. The shark seen at Lover's Point Beach in Monterey Bay. Authorities immediately shutting the beach down, trying to track the shark with a drone, but so far, no luck. We see dolphins and whales uh, routinely, sea lions, harbor seals, uh, lots of swimmers, lots of paddleboarders, but never a shark. Experts say shark sightings are rare, but this year they're being seen earlier than usual. The water is pretty warm already for this time of year, and that's kind of unusual. And coming up at 7 a.m., more with the eyewitnesses who watched the terrifying scene unfold. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Carr, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, if you're planning a summer or even fall vacation, you may be looking for a great deal on the airfare. And just when you think you've found it, you realize the price does not include a bunch of extra fees. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some ways to avoid them. Ponchejo thought she was getting a good deal on a flight to Florida until she looked more closely. It was a carry-on bag fee that I was most surprised by. The fees for my flight uh, were more expensive than the airfare itself. Turns out that's not that uncommon, according to Consumer Reports aviation expert Bill McGee. These days, many airlines make more money off of fees than they do over base airfares. So what can you do to save? Start with the airline's website to see exactly what's included in the price of the type of ticket you're considering. Then decide what extras you're willing to pay for. Ask yourself, what could they possibly be charging me? Baggage is the most obvious, even carry-on baggage a seat assignment, uh, early boarding. Many airlines have loosened or even eliminated change or cancellation fees. Southwest allows for two free check bags, a rare thing. If you're a frequent flyer on the same airline, consider that airline's credit card. It could offer valuable perks like free checked bags and priority seating and boarding. Ponche plans to travel more this summer. She expects flights to be pretty crowded and cost more than last year. Bill McGee's advice? If you see a fare right now and you think you're going to be traveling this summer, my advice is to book it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Looking out there at I-35 at Judson, things are moving this morning. Not too bad for 447. Bad. That's what we like to see out there. Yes. No traffic. Hopefully it'll kind of stay that way throughout the morning. I hope so too. But we'll see. And you know, you said it was humid this morning. Yes, it is. I felt but, it. But we were, yeah, I feel it too, but I were thankful that it was not as humid as it was yesterday That's morning. Right. That's yeah. right. So Because we started off the week not bad. Right. And then it progressively got more humid each and every morning. And yeah, this morning it's actually kind of nice out there. Compared I mean, to yesterday. I mean, still have some humidity. Yeah. It's not bone dry air. But uh, this is also a nice little picture there. And yes, you had to think cool thoughts in the afternoon. Because yesterday afternoon, even though we didn't hit officially 100 out of the airport, it just seemed like it felt hotter out there. And, uh, you know, rain dance wouldn't hurt either. And I think folks may be dancing by the first part of next week because we're still looking at a change in this overall pattern and also still looking at some decent rain chances coming in here by the first of next week. We've got mostly clear skies right now. We'll see a couple of clouds developing later on this morning. The dew points again, the, we talk about that number, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. That's how you figure out relative humidity. Anyway, these numbers are down here in town, eight degrees compared to yesterday morning. Seven Hondo, seven Uvalde. Uh, beautiful to see that big drop in the uh, the dew point temperatures. The that much less moisture in the atmosphere. Temperatures are going to be in the mid 70s this morning. Again, a few more clouds are going to be developing here. We'll warm up obviously fairly quickly, and this dryer does warm up a little more easily than moist air does because it takes a lot more energy to, to heat up moisture. So we'll be you know once again getting up in through the mid and upper 80s through the late morning hours. 
hours and then yeah, going for 100 again today. Still got that 10% chance for a stray shower. We had one or two of them around here yesterday and this uh, rapid update computer model has one or two of them. Once again today, most everybody's not going to see anything, but uh, hey, if you get a little bit of light rain, that's fine. Let's jump ahead into next week and Monday. And again, I've got to kind of qualify this. This tends to this, you know, just a broad brush sweeping, but at least what this is doing, there's that better chance of rain that's going to be developing as we go into Monday as well as into Tuesday. Doesn't mean it's going to be raining everywhere constantly, but that rain chance does exist throughout much of the day on Tuesday. There is a feature, uh, somewhat of a front, uh, and I know, you know, it's really tough to talk about those in the middle of summer, but this thing wants to lie down sort of in the vicinity that along with the cloud cover is going to help to keep temperatures down and keep that rain chance around and that's going to be the situation into uh, parts of the day on Wednesday as well. So like I said, it is very encouraging to see this. It is not necessarily a sure thing, but and the consistency has been there for the past four days with long range computer models and uh, yeah, it's this is the nicest forecast we've had in a long time. 90 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, nicest forecast four days from now. 100 for a high temperature today, a stray shower. Uh, humidity won't be outrageous today, and as a matter of fact, it does look like it is going to be staying uh, fairly fairly comfortable in the mornings and then obviously dropping in the afternoon somewhat. We are going to get up into the low hundreds though this weekend. It's going to be another scorcher. And then look at that, 90 Tuesday and Wednesday with the normal high temperature by then being right around 94 degrees. We're going to be below normal for the first time in forever. That's around. true, forever. And rain chances. Rain chances, Monday. definitely that yeah. rain. Yeah, that looks awesome, Mike. Please, Thank you so please, much. Please, yes. Fingers crossed <laughs> yes. for rain. We definitely oh, do this. I'm liking that 40% chance right there. Yeah, it, it that has actually gone up. As time goes on, the, the rain chances have been improving as well, so. Good. Well, 451, 78 degrees outside, keeping our fingers crossed for some rain. But up next, Johnny Depp is going back on tour with some of his friends following his defamation trial. Thursday's Lot of Pages, Powerball Day, pick three, five, four, nine, and one. And daily four, six, three, nine, four, and seven. Cash five, 14, 25, 30, 33, 34. Your Lotto Texas, 11, 12, 23, 36, 45, 49. And your Powerball numbers, 6, 10, 31, 48, 56, Powerball 12, Power Play 3. Good luck. A first look at family's journey to the NBA plus Johnny Depp is going back on tour. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. When one person in the family scores, the whole family scores. <laughs> it's an amazing and inspiring story. One family's journey to the NBA. Rise chronicles the struggles of the Intento Kumpo family, which now has three brothers in the NBA. Real life brothers and first time actors Uche and Raul Agata play Giannis and Thanasis and Tinto Kumpo. Who's the better basketball player between the two of you? It used to be me. Right? Uh, I remember back in the day, he used to always kill me. Now I'm taking his ankles and dunking on him all day. Taking my ankles and dunking on nah, him. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, uh, we're both uh, both pretty good. Rise premieres Friday on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Out today, the delinquent duo Beavis and Butthead are back in Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe. They return as a time-traveling twosome in their first film since 1996. And the animated series is due to return later this year. It's all on Paramount+. Plus. Johnny Depp's post-defamation trial move, going back on tour with his band Hollywood Vampire. They'll tour overseas this summer with bandmates Alice Cooper, Joe Perry, and more. And Oscar winner Frances McDormand with a birthday today. She's 65. While actress Selma Blair turns 50. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time is 4.56, 78 degrees, but not too humid. Not too humid. Still ahead on GMSA as oil companies descend on Washington today, how the Biden administration is now working at lowering sky-high gas prices. Plus, FedEx is trying to something different to make sure your packages are delivered correctly. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. I see flashing lights there at Loop 410 at Exchange Parkway, but I also see Stephen Cavazos in the studio. In the house. Good morning. <laughs> we'll be checking in with him in a little while.
Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. SAPD says a woman on a bicycle is hit by a hit and run driver overnight. Details coming up. The White House preparing for a high stakes meeting with the oil industry, just as President Biden is now calling for a federal gas tax holiday. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. That story coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting human, however, not as human as yesterday morning. And that is always welcome. Good morning. It's Thursday, June 23rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, we'll take these small little victories and another one hopefully coming along next week. Some That's rain. right. We have our fingers crossed mm -hmm. for rain. That's something we definitely need in our area. Mike. Tell me the good news. Well, the, the good news is, yeah, the forecast is still very consistent going into next week with a pretty much a change in this pattern that we've been stuck in for it seems like ever. Now in the short term, yes, we do have some lower humidity this morning. It crept up just a little bit in the past hour. Dew points down to 65 degrees. It was actually down to 63 about an hour, hour and a half ago, but that's still Fairly comfortable, a lot lower than yesterday when we were up in the, the 70s around most of the area with those dew points. That's the, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. Temperature right now stands at 79 degrees, so we're still five above normal. And yep, we're going to be up there in triple digit range once again today. One or two of those stray showers are going to be popping up again. We had a couple of them yesterday, the past few days, so um, not really anything that's going to do anything. The aquifer, another big hit, down seven tenths of a foot. Of course, check with your local municipality as far as any watering restrictions restrictions because it varies from place to place. Of course, mold is on the low side. All right, the dew points again, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. These numbers are down five, six, seven degrees compared to yesterday. 60s that threshold and well, Bernie stage was at 61 just last hour, 63 now. Same thing, Bandera, Rio Medina and Hondo, which again is really not bad. Um, Lost Maples at 61 for a dew point temperature. Still fairly humid though over there around Seguin. So we'll still keep some humidity around this morning and then it will be dropping down by later on this afternoon. We go through the usual daily cycle. So somewhat lower humidity this morning. It's not as though it's going to kind of hitch in the face when you walk outside 100. Yep, a stray shower again, just a couple of them out there hot and actually getting hotter. Now humidity is not going to be a huge issue. We're not going to have just sky high uh, heat index readings in the afternoons, but it is going to be hotter as we go in through the weekend and then yeah, next week still decent rain chances around here. Actually, they've gone up a little bit and temperatures will be slightly lower. We're actually going to be seeing some below normal readings for the first time in forever. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority Stephen Cavazos. Good morning. What's cooking? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we are seeing those flashing lights here at 410 at Exchange Parkway near the northwest side of San Antonio. Thankfully, this is nothing that drivers need to be so wary of, but they do need to be alert because this is some road work that we are seeing out there. One of the many spots that we are detecting here on our map, as you can see, it's the same situation. A lot of those active construction spots, but what we are seeing is a crash detected right over here near the southeast side of 37 South and Adonip Road. Now this crash, unfortunately, I talked to our friends at Transguide. They're not able to give us a shot of this location, but we will have some video a little bit later on in the newscast and we'll give you an update on that area as the morning does roll on. But for now, if you are going to be rolling on through San Antonio to San Antonio, that is uh, you're in luck. We're just about green across the board. The journey from Bernie 25 minutes and those eastbound lanes of I-10 right now 27 minutes on on 281 southbound if you're heading in from Bolverde and a 26 minute drive time on I-35 southbound traveling in from New Braunfels. So no need to rush at this hour. You can enjoy your cup of coffee at home, maybe your breakfast taco. But one last look here at 410 at Exchange Parkway. We're going to have more updates on some of those construction spots a little bit later on in the newscast, as well as an update on that crash on 37. Again, a little later on on GMSA. Jonathan Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman on a bicycle has some broken bones this morning after being hit by a vehicle on the east side overnight. So it happened in the 300 block of Susan Wood near Whispering Creek Drive and SJ David Middle School. Police say around midnight, the woman was riding her bike when she was hit by that vehicle. Police say the driver stopped at first, but then drove away without providing assistance. No vehicle description was given. The woman was taken to the hospital with a possible broken angle and some head injuries. 
And listen to this, Pete Arredondo is now on an administrative leave with Uvalde CISD police, but the district would not say whether he is being paid. The superintendent says he was holding off on personal decisions, but changed his mind given the quote, unknown timing on investigation results. Several neighbors told Case at 12 they are happy with the decision. He should never be allowed to work in law enforcement again. I, my personal opinion. Bravo. About time. It's about time. It's been almost a month. You just heard from Uvalde resident Kimberly Hammond. She also called for Arredondo's removal from city council earlier this week. If he misses two more consecutive meetings, the council could vote to remove him. The Uvalde Together Resiliency Center is vowing to stay open for the community for the next five years. Stemmed from the Family Assistance Center started by the FBI and DPS, the Resiliency Center is primarily run by the Ecumenical Center and the Uvalde District Attorney's Office. Now, people in the community can get legal advice, counseling, consulate services, workforce commission services, and victim services all while their kids play safely and get their own counseling nearby. Outside, there are nine private pods for one-on-one -on -one counseling and three larger spaces for families. Christina Mitchell, the district attorney, has been working with the governor's office, the Ecumenical Center, and the Pulse Nightclub Resiliency Center on a more permanent space for long-term care. The county has purchased a building with the assistance of the governor's office. It was an old bank building on Main Street in, in uh, Uvalde. The Resiliency Center is at 215 Veterans Lane. We're going to have more information, including phone numbers, on KSAT.com. So for the entire month of June, they are open Monday, Saturday through Saturday from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. And starting July 1st, their hours shift to Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. Our coverage on Uvalde continues on our social media pages, and you can also find the latest updates on our website at kset.com. Right now, you can read more about what we've learned about the response and the gun measures now being discussed. And now to Washington and a planned meeting today between the Biden administration and seven CEOs of big oil companies. The White House saying it will press the executives to lower their prices and help curb gas prices for families nationwide. ABC's Jay O'Brien reports from Washington. This morning, with gas prices surging, the CEOs of seven major oil companies called to Washington to attend an emergency meeting with Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm. The fact is that no president alone can control the price of gasoline, and we need more players at the table. President Biden not planning on attending the meeting today like after spending to, uh, weeks criticizing oil companies for raking in record profits while not ramping up fuel production. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you are paying for the product. Do it now. Do it today. Oil executives responding. The administration's push for more green energy is making the problem worse. Chevron's CEO saying the White House is wrongly vilifying big oil. According to AAA, the national average is now just under $5 a gallon, down slightly from record highs last week. In Los Angeles, Evelyn Vargas, a mom of four, still struggling. We don't know what to do because the, the prices are increasing every single day. The president now calling on Congress to give drivers a break and suspend the federal gas tax for three months, which would save drivers about 18 cents a gallon or $2.76 to fill up a 15 gallon tank. But it will provide families some immediate relief, just a little bit of breathing room as we continue working to bring down prices for the long haul. But Congress would need to approve the measure. And on Capitol Hill, concerns the move is facing stiff opposition from Republicans who call it a political ploy ahead of the midterm elections. Even some key Democrats not signaling support. I'm not a yes right now, that's for sure. President Biden is also calling on states to suspend their own gas taxes, praising states like New York, Illinois, and Colorado for either delaying or suspending their fuel tax. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And time now, 509 and 78 degrees for now. And still ahead, how FedEx is changing its procedures to prove that your packages are being delivered properly. Also next, how Bear County courts are having to deal with staffing shortages, including a lack of prosecutors. And taking a look outside on live cam, you can see those roadways, not too much traffic, but of course, we're going to be checking in with our Steven Cavazos on the latest on the roadways.
Staffing shortages are affecting the Bear County courts. Our case at team spoke with District Attorney Joe Gonzalez about the shortage of prosecutors. The DA says usually they lose around 20 prosecutors in a year, but this year they have already lost 27. The DA says they are losing people to either smaller counties where the workload is less or bigger cities like Dallas and Houston where the pay is more competitive. So the prosecutors left behind are doing double the work. We have this prosecutor issue that we've got to do something about because what are we going to tell victims of crime? Sorry, we can't get to your case because we don't have enough people. Uh, we can't do that. We, we, we won't do that. Uh, and that's why we, we do what we do. That's why our prosecutors work around the clock. The DA goes on to say he hopes to get better funding to help bring in new hires. And he has already asked Bear County Commissioners for help with prosecutor pay. And time now, 513 and 78 degrees for now. And still ahead, we'll tell you more about Twitter testing a new long-form blogging feature. And how Amazon is using its digital assistant to mimic the voice of a deceased relative. If you haven't tried Dawn Power Wash Dispray, what are you waiting for? It's Dawn's fastest and easiest way to clean everyday dishes. On simple messes, just spray, wipe, and rinse. On tough messes, its spray-activated suds have five times faster grease cleaning power to break down grease without water. Plus, its targeted spray cleans even hard to reach places better. So, replace your dish soap with Dawn Power Wash and spray your dishes clean. Okay, everyone, our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Ensure complete balanced nutrition with 27 vitamins and minerals and ensure complete with 30 grams of protein. For Imprint, this is Lisa. Hi, I'd like 50 welcome wows and 300 customer I love it. Promotional products from For Imprint are certain to deliver ooh yes. Wow. I love it. Find some wow now at forimprint.com. For Imprint, for certain. It's all about quality assurance. FedEx customers will soon receive a photo as proof of delivery. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, FedEx is set to provide a clear picture of your packages. The company will send customers photos of items to prove that they've been delivered. The free service will be used for packages that do not require signatures. Amazon has had a similar program for four years. Twitter is testing a new feature for long-formed writing. It's called Notes, basically a blog post that appears within Twitter. Notes does not have character limits like tweets. Users can embed photos and videos and ramble on as long as they want. Finally, Amazon's Alexa may soon be able to replicate a specific human voice. Developers recently showed how Alexa can mimic a voice after hearing it for less than a minute. So if the feature rolls out, you could have Alexa sound like your favorite celebrity or a late relative. All right, all right, all right. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Yeah, maybe Matthew McConaughey. That would be fun. Yeah, I think a celebrity would, would do. I'm yeah. not too sure how I feel about a late relative. I agree with that one. I mean, to each their own. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I know that those roadway conditions are looking like anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, depending on where you're coming from. We're going to be checking in with the traffic authority, Stephen Calasos. Thank you, Jonathan. Steph, I would pick Dolly Parton. I think that'd oh, be yeah. a nice such a good wake up to this morning. <laughs> that would uh, be nice. But maybe, hey, someone will choose one of our voices. I'm not saying we're celebrities, but you know, they hear our voices every morning, so that could be an option as well. Just That's letting y'all know. <laughs> All right, let's get a look around town and see what you can expect for this early drive. Thankfully, not a whole lot to talk about, but as Jonathan was mentioning, more or less, you can expect about a 20 to 30 minute commute, depending if you're traveling into the Alamo City. But for now, here in town, things look fine. Now, off of 37, we did tell you about a crash uh, that is still being reported by TxDOT. However, we are not seeing any delays off of 37 southbound near Donup Road. Just be out for those first responders, we'll be working to get a look at the scene a little bit later on in this newscast, but we always want you to plan ahead. You saw there was a lot of construction taking place. This one will start Saturday and we're already looking ahead to the weekend because we're almost there. 281 over on the north side of San Antonio wall work continuing to take place this time on Saturday, June 25th. It will start at 9 morning and should wrap around three in the afternoon. But during that time, drivers can expect a single southbound lane closure at the Borkfield road intersection. Now grab those phones, open up your camera 
app, you know what time it is to scan this QR code by tapping the center of your screen. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that has a list of the latest closures taking place in your area and anything else that could impact your drive time. Just don't forget, scroll to the bottom of the page. Guys, why do I think that would put people up to no good? What, imitating some? Oh, <laughs> you could play a trick on somebody in your house. That's true. Oh, <laughs> guess just who's saying. here? He's or planning to see. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you know, the voice activated or whatever, yeah. what are the like they do in the movies all the time. That's yeah. true. It's the future. Many hmm. options out there. Hmm. The future is anyway, anyway, all right. Um, yeah, this is what a lot of people have been seeing. Rain off in the distance. There is, and, you know, it looks impressive in this picture, but a very small rain shaft right there. And we had a couple, you know, one or two of those yesterday. There's going to be one or two of them again today. Um, yeah. Look good off in the distance. At least somebody got a little bit of uh, some free lawn watering yesterday. We've got mostly clear skies right now. We'll see a few more clouds developing. And here's the uh, satellite radar loop again going back in time and going back the past 12 hours. And yeah, there were those few, just one or two of them that popped up. Actually, couple more than just one or two, but um, yeah, they didn't last very long and that's going to be the situation again today. Just those pop up little showers and brief little shower here and there. Mid upper 70s throughout the rest of the morning and the humidity is not bad this morning. It is lower, significantly lower than what it was yesterday by good. Oh, dew points are down five, six, seven, eight degrees compared to that. I mean, still, yes, it is humid, but it's not that uh, just kind of run into a wall of humidity when you step outside. We'll be up to the low 90s today at noon and then topping off at 100 later on today. 10% chance for a couple of showers out there once again, which computer models are indicating just again those few little pop ups here and there throughout the late afternoon and the early evening hours. Got to jump ahead to the future. This is what looks encouraging long range models and everything has been very consistent and there's a couple of them that do show some rain around here again tends to paint with a broad brush, but what this is showing is there is that chance of rain throughout a good portion of the area going in Monday, especially later in the day, Tuesday and throughout the afternoon on Tuesday and then even continuing on into the uh, the middle part of the week. And the reason for that is the high, which is sitting on top of us. This is pushing down in the atmosphere. This is keeping this pattern has not really changed. This thing has been stuck there for it seems like forever. Now, what will be happening is as we go into the weekend, this is going to start to work its way off to the west and then we get into more of a northwesterly flow and that pulls that little bit of a front down here or allows that front to move down in here, sort of settle into the area. And that's what's going to give us a chance for some rain. And then the high, pretty much the center of it's going to be developing off to the east of us, which is uh, a better scenario because hopefully we get some of these disturbances, little waves coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico, which would at least give us a chance for some rain. So the overall pattern does look like it's finally starting to break by next week. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today does make it up to 100. We just barely missed it yesterday. I don't think anybody's complaining about that. Got up to 98 officially out there at the airport. One or two stray showers. And then the next few days, well, still going to still gonna keep the same thing going in through Sunday. And it actually gets hotter this weekend. Humidity is not going to be a huge issue. I mean, it's still there, but not oppressively humid. And Consistency with the uh, long range forecast, which is nice to see that this whole pattern's finally going to break. Nice. Boy, it was just, I mean, oh, it's been wearing on a lot of folks. Yes, yeah, it's been a tough, a tough yeah, June temperature yeah. wise. Yeah, we'll take those 90s. Thank you. Then the Absolutely. electric bill is yet to come. That, that <laughs> Got too. my CPS email. So. Oh, did you? Oh. In for a lovely surprise. Oh, no. Not what I was expecting. Small one bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Still. Double digits. Everybody. So. Yeah. Yet he's still. <laughs> Gotta stay positive, right, Stephen? <laughs> well, time is 523 and temperature 78 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, Ed Sheeran wins another court battle, plus a first look at My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. A big ruling for Ed Sheeran, a new Greek wedding, and a movie with a magical mixtape. CNN's David Daniel has it all in today's Hollywood Minute. Well, I'm in love with your body.
Ed Sheeran and his co-writers on Shape of You have been locked in a legal battle for years with two other songwriters who claim he ripped off their earlier song, Oh Why. In April, a UK judge ruled there was no copyright infringement. Now he's awarded Sheeran and his songwriting partners $1.1 million in legal costs, though another judge could eventually reduce that amount. Who says a woman has to be married? You. All our lives. The wedding is off! Prepare for yet another big fat Greek wedding. Nia Vardalos announced on Instagram she's in Athens, Greece, filming My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3, which she's also directing. I don't really know how to say this without sounding crazy, but um, I can travel through time. How is this even possible? I don't know, but every time I play a song on the mixtape, it takes me back in time to the moment we first heard it together. The magic of music gives a woman a second chance with the love of her life after a fatal accident in Press Play. The romantic drama stars Clara Rugard, Lewis Pullman, and Danny Glover. Press Play debuts in theaters and on digital platforms Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, there you have it. We have some new movies to go watch. Yeah, very interesting. I have three to catch up on. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, it's 528, 78 degrees outside. And still ahead on GMSA, why the Fed is issuing a rare warning about raising interest rates too fast and too high. Plus, a new proposal could soon change the way nicotine is distributed in tobacco products. TikTok is a popular social media app, but there are some dangerous trends circulating on the app that you should know about. We're going to have those details ahead on GMSA at 6. Making headlines this morning, more interest rate hikes could be ahead. What that means for a possible recession. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at 78 degrees for now. Things will heat up, but we're looking forward to next week. Hint, hint. We sure are. And good morning, San Antonio. It's Thursday, June 23rd. Stephanie, such a pleasure being in studio with you this morning. Welcome. I'm glad to have you here and welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm glad that the temperatures, okay, so it is humid, you know, of course, a little outside, bit. but not as humid as it was not yesterday. Not as bad as it was yesterday. Yeah. So that's a good sign. We know we're going to be by at 90 by noon, which is good. Not over those right. over 100 degrees. Not so that's like great. the 105 we had seen before. So <laughs> things are starting to look a little positive. We'll take what we can get. Yeah. Okay, I like the eternal optimism back there. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, the one We're thing to keep it in perspective, 90 at noon, uh, the normal high temperature right now is 93. So we're almost at where the, you know, historical average is. And yes, we are going to be hitting 100 today. But back to step outside. It is not like you're going to be slapped in the face with the humidity. So. We've dropped down considerably. That's much more comfortable. Yeah, it's still somewhat humid out there, but uh, that is also with some clear skies allowing some slightly lower temperatures in places. And we're still at 72 Comfort Bandera, 79 here in town, still well above normal. But again, these numbers make all the difference in the world. It's still pretty humid there in Seguin and as well as at Stinson, but at least Overall, you know, we'll take anything like like they were saying, anything we can get as far as the humidity. Low uh, amount of mold in the atmosphere. The updated count is going to come out in a couple hours or so. And throughout the day, yep, 100. Again, we barely missed it. I don't think anybody complains about that, but hit 98 yesterday. And 10% chance for one or two of those pop-up showers again. We've had pretty much every day this week just to here and there. That'll be the situation again today, but we're still looking at some better rain chances, sort of a, an overall change in this pattern that we've been stuck in for ever, and that's going to be coming up next week. Details on that and a look at the last weekend of June. If you can believe that's coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos. What do you have to tell us? Not a whole lot, Mr. Osterhage. Let's get a look there at Transguy. Uh, some of these shots are just showing a lot of pavement. Maybe one or two folks out there this morning, but other areas like you can see are at 35 at Judson. Looks like the morning is picking up for some spots around town, so keep that in mind as the morning does continue. We'll likely see the morning uh, the roadways get a little bit busier, so just buckle up, be safe, both hands on the wheel and both eyes on the road. Now, we are showing you a lot of construction spots, and we typically do anytime the morning is quiet, and we'll break that down as the morning 
morning does continue to stay that way. However, we have been watching a crash that looks like it may be cleared off of here at 37 southbound near Donup Road. Again, we're going to get you a view of that a little bit later on. We had a crew that went out to the scene, but thankfully it's not causing any issues for drivers since it is still very early this morning. If you are going to be traveling into San Antonio, Mike mentioned some of that humidity still lingering in Seguin, but you know what? You're going to be in the green when it comes to your travel times. 29 minutes to downtown SA, about a half an hour uh, coming in from 37 northbound in Lavernia at our, pardon me, 87 northbound in a 28 minute drive time traveling up from Floresville. So no worry there, but back here at home and the trans guide cameras, I've seen a few more folks out there. 35 at Ben Zingelman, 410 at Exchange Parkway. Looks like that road work has wrapped up. We'll have more updates coming up a little bit later on. Jonathan Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Well, other stories we're following this morning. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is signaling continued interest rate hikes and warning the moves could lead to a recession. Powell went before the Senate Banking Committee yesterday and addressed the actions the Fed is taking to lower inflation and avoid a recession. Students Cole Higgins has a closer look at the grilling questions from lawmakers. The Fed issuing a rare warning, saying raising interest rates too high and too fast could lead the U.S. economy into a recession. It's certainly a possibility. It's not our intended uh, outcome at all, but it's certainly a possibility. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell making the concession on Wednesday before a Senate banking committee hearing, telling lawmakers that additional interest rate hikes could be ahead and admitting that those aggressive hikes won't solve two of the biggest problems facing families, high prices for gas and groceries. We understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren challenging Powell, saying rate increases won't do much to bring down prices, but would instead raise borrowing costs for families. You know what's worse than high inflation and low unemployment? It's high inflation and a recession with millions of people out of work. And I hope you'll reconsider that as you drive this before you drive this economy off a cliff. The Fed has raised interest rates several times this year to help tame the 40 year high inflation. Last week's rate hike was its biggest since 1994. Powell's comments come as President Joe Biden proposes a gas tax holiday to help Americans with historic gas prices. The second action I'm taking is calling on states to either suspend the state gas tax as well or find other ways to deliver some relief. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. Now, the Texas Senator John Cornyn is telling fellow Senate Republicans about areas where the National Rifle Association got what it wanted in the bipartisan gun measure. The Senate voted Tuesday to advance the gun safety bill to debate and a possibly a final vote this week. Now, the NRA opposes the bill. However, Cornyn, who helped broker the deal, says the NRA got some of its asks, including due process rules for states that implement red flag laws. Also, uh, the so-called boyfriend loophole does not not apply retroactively to past domestic abusers and only applies to recent relationships. Cornyn's presentation was part of an effort to grow GOP support beyond the 14 Republicans who voted to open debate. Now, most Republicans will likely oppose the bill, but it looks like it will pass because Democrats only need 10 GOP votes. In Houston, police say a man covered in blood was shot and killed by one of their officers. They say it began yesterday when the man was beating on a door in a neighborhood asking for help. He was acting erratic and said he was being chased. Now, the man got inside an elder, elderly couple's house. The homeowner there called police after he started fighting with her husband. A neighbor with a gun also came over to help. And when police got there, the woman was covered in blood and the neighbor and suspect were fighting over that gun. The suspect got a hold of the weapon and officers opened fire, killing the man. One officer was injured in that shootout. She is expected to be okay. Now, monkeypox testing capacity is expanding in the U.S. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention sent shipments of monkeypox tests to five laboratories. Laboratories. It says the move will make, make it possible for anyone who needs a test to get one. Now, the laboratories will be available to health care providers by early July. Testing capacity is expected to be ramped up throughout the month. And according to the CDC, there have been 142 reported monkeypox cases, monkeypox cases in the United States across 23 states. And time now, 538 and 77 degrees for now. And still ahead, how millions of Americans are officially being priced out of the American dream of owning a home. Also next, how a new proposal by the Biden administration would restrict nicotine products. 
And taking a look outside through live cam, it's a little hazy, but nonetheless, 77 degrees right now, 539. The Biden administration is making moves to restrict nicotine in tobacco products. One health expert says if enacted, it could have a huge impact on public health in this country. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on what the proposal could mean. The future of tobacco in the U.S. up in the air. The level of nicotine allowed in cigarettes and other tobacco products could be changing. Reducing nicotine in cigarettes will for the first time really make smoking a free choice. The FDA says nicotine is the ingredient that makes it hard for some people to quit smoking. A new proposed rule would establish a maximum nicotine level in cigarettes and other tobacco products. We'll do more to reduce the number of people who die from tobacco use than any other single action that could, could have been taken. According to the CDC, cigarette smoking causes about one in every five deaths in the U.S. every year. Data from 2014 shows more than 480,000 deaths annually. Matthew Myers, president of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, says the new rule would also lower the number of children who become addicted to tobacco. Tobacco itself does not taste good to a young person. They continue to smoke only because they become addicted. This will fundamentally transform the health of our young people. The regulations wouldn't happen overnight, and there's no guarantee the proposed rule would be enacted. The FDA will have to issue their proposal, then have public comment, which could take a year or more. Experts say it's likely that tobacco companies would then sue to keep the rule from going into place. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. It's 5.43 a.m., 77 degrees outside. And coming up next, this new pet is ready to go home with you today. We're going to visit with the San Antonio Humane Society next. Puppy time. Kim's here from the San Antonio Humane <laughs> Society. And boy, what a classic terrier. Hi, yes. sweetie. How are you? Say good morning. This is sunshine. It's perfect, Aww. obviously. We're in the beginning of summer. Lots of sunshine outside. So the name really fits her. She is a five-year-old terrier um, <laughs> who is just really sweet Maybe just looking for a home that you know she can be a lap dog she can also run and play so yeah terriers Box. are great they have so much personality they do. And yes indeed and you'll they just do. kind of run the household won't you say i will and you've got the most beautiful brown eyes I do yes I... indeed <laughs> and kim is here terry is going to be begging for treats kim is begging for supplies yes. over there yes. at the san antonio humane society yes absolutely treats wet cat kitten food, uh, which is like the Purina Pro Plan, any of that stuff, you're cleaning out your closet, you're giving your kids chores to do, mm -hmm. towels, blankets, bring them. Okay. So everything like that. Now, some of the things you can get on the Amazon wish list, but again, towels and, and blankets, because they, they're used for like everything. 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 So yes. yeah. get rid of that stuff. You're bring not going to use it. Okay. And we need it. Yes, okay. absolutely. Come All right. See us. And if you would like more information on what they need or to adopt little sunshine here, see, she would be the sunshine of your she life. She would. 40 to 4, Fredericksburg <laughs> Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. In your morning consumer headlines, the American dream is now out of reach for millions of Americans. That's according to Harvard University's annual State of the Nation's housing report. The report found the income needed to qualify for a home has priced out about 4 million renters over the past year alone. The annual income needed to get a mortgage was $28,000 higher in April versus the same time last year. Now that's in part due to monthly payments for mortgage, property tax, and insurance also increasing this year. And experts say the record run up in home prices and rising interest rates are making the situation even worse. Now, Joel Vape's pens may soon be pulled from stores in the U.S. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the FDA is preparing to order e-cigarette maker Joel to pull its products from store shelves. The agency has not formally announced a move yet. Joel gained notoriety after it was criticized for selling flavored vape pods that were popular with teens. The company ended sales of its flavored products in 2019, shortly before the FDA banned the products. 
and I was looking at the TransGuy cameras. It looks like things are moving, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, things are moving just fine from what we're seeing on TransGuy. Jonathan, Stephanie, let's get a look around town. There's I-10 at Callahan. That's my morning commute, but 281 at Grayson looks like it's getting a little bit busier out there. Just be careful with that curve along 281 in Hildebrandt. We know a lot of people forget to slow down in that section, but here at 37 at Houston, 35 at AT&T Parkway, we're not seeing any big issues just yet. However, as you bring you right to the map, we told you about this crash over here on the southeast side of town that has since cleared out. But let's go ahead and take a look at the scene earlier this morning. Now this video that was shot actually by our photojournalist is in Bermia and there it is right on your screen. We were uh, seeing this reported in the southbound lanes, but information from Katrina Weber uh, said that it was just in the northbound lanes and the roads were actually down to just one lane of traffic. Uh, you can see there on your screen. It did involve at least one vehicle. Not clear if the driver faced any injuries, but we're hoping that everybody is OK. But the good news here is that 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 crash has been cleared out by first responders and we are seeing some just open lanes in that area. Uh, but be on the lookout here. Also want to remind you of some drainage work taking place off 410 on the west side of San Antonio uh, that should be wrapping up on July 4th. So we still have some ways to go. So just hang in there. Nine in the morning to five in the afternoon is when you can expect a full closure of the northbound to southbound turnaround at Culebra Road. But back here at Transguide, things are moving just fine as we're inching closer and closer to 6 a.m. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Wow. Is that rain or yeah. a little bit of rain out <laughs> well, there? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like it says, take what you can get. Yeah. And that doesn't amount to uh, too often much enough to maybe keep the dust down. But, uh, you know, it, take anything. It's going to be the same situation again today with just one or two of those little showers that, you know, move through. They don't last all that long. But at least we're looking at better rain chances going into next week. So mostly clear skies right now. We'll have a few clouds developing later on this morning and the humidity. These numbers are down about average five, four, five, six degrees compared to this time yesterday. So yeah, still humid, but it's a whole lot more pleasant than walking outside at this time yesterday and the humidity will drop down somewhat in the afternoon, come back up in the morning, but not really just ridiculously high humidity. So that's one thing we're looking forward to over the next couple of days. Temperatures, we are going to be um, fluctuating a few notches here and there this morning. We'll have some morning clouds develop and then lots of sunshine later on today and about the same temperature profile as the past few days. Now yesterday we didn't quite muster 100. I don't think anybody's really disappointed at that. Uh, we are going to be getting up there today and wind out of the southeast 10 15 miles per hour. Still that 10% chance for a stray shower or two, which is what this uh, computer model. This is the one that's really been handling those pop up showers pretty well over the past couple of days and same situation again today. Just a couple of them out there jump into the future and this is Monday morning. Long range computer models, a couple of them are pretty consistent on having some rain move on in here. What would, is going on? There's a, a front which is going to be sort of lying down in the area moving in here. And this is all part of the, the overall pattern change that we're looking forward to for next week. So this is going to give us the chance for some rain around here, especially looks like later on in the day, Monday, and then going into Monday night as well as overnight into Tuesday. Now, Broad brush doesn't mean it's going to rain constantly nor everywhere, but it's just showing that there is that rain chance and a decent chance of rain going in through Tuesday, even Wednesday. And this particular model keeps uh, some rain chances around here even into Thursday. And the other thing that looks pretty nice is when you look at this graph. Wow, what a difference. 10, 12 degree difference in high temperatures. So these numbers are almost 10 degrees above normal. These numbers are about three to four degrees below normal, which would be a very welcome sight. I don't know if that would be a sight or just a few. Anyway, very welcome. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies and then a high temperature today up to 100. A couple of those stray showers around here. It's before we start to see the whole pattern change. Yep, going to be getting hotter over the weekend. 102 Saturday and Sunday. Humidity won't be bad in the afternoon, so we're not going to have outrageously high heat index readings. If you're in the shade, comfortable, still hot and then mid and lower 90s for the first half of next week and decent rain chances. It's not still, you know, written in stone yet, but it's still looking very promising. Yeah, let's hear it for the 90s. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. We're here for it. Yes, definitely. It feels. Well, it's 553, 77 degrees outside. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3549, Fireball 1, Daily 4, 6394, Fireball 7.
And Cactus 5, 14, 25, 30, 33, and 34. Texas Lotto, 11, 12, 23, 36, 45, and 49. And Powerball, 6, 10, 31, 48, 56. Powerball, 12. Coming up on Good Morning America, the latest on President Biden's big push for a national gas tax holiday. Oil executives are set to meet with White House officials. Also, how an American nuclear scientist was finally rescued after being trapped in Ukraine for months. What we're learning this morning, that's coming up right here on GMA. And if your kids wanted to try out a new sport, KSAT is partnering with the nonprofit San Antonio Sports to bring you full instructional videos to learn and practice those skills. The videos teach the fundamentals of soccer, basketball, volleyball, and track. You can find out more by visiting our website, KSAT.com. Now ahead on our next hour of GMSA, six people are dead this morning after a helicopter goes down in West Virginia. We'll have more details. And back here at home, police are looking for the driver responsible for striking a bicyclist with a vehicle. We'll have the latest on the victim's condition. And taking a look at Trans Guide, Steven Cavazos says keeping an eye on the roads. We'll get an update on your morning commute coming up. The Robb Elementary shooting investigation continues this morning, and now the school district's police department has new leadership. We'll explain. And it's a big night for our San Antonio Spurs. I have tons of picks in this year's draft. You can watch it all on KSAT 12. We have a preview. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are starting in the 70s again. Things will heat up, but we are looking forward to some changes possibly next week. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio. We've made it to Thursday, June 23rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, Thursday, like Friday, Junior. We're almost at Friday, almost so <laughs> very excited about that. And we're excited about these rain chances. Absolutely. Those Small. The chance of rain. Small. I'm glad it's in Small our forecast. Chances. At yes. least we can say rain is on its way, even if it's a little bit. Right. We've had a couple of stray showers the past few days, you know, just in the afternoon. A couple of days ago, I got one that lasted about, you know, that long, and that was it. Um, same, thing, same thing today. Next week, yes, we're looking at the overall pattern to sort of change, and that does include some of those rain chances. We've been talking about how long-range computer models, uh, the consistency is always good, and for the past really four days, they have been very consistent and actually getting a little more encouraging. We'll talk more about that in a second. First of all, uh, we've got a lot of clear skies right now, and it is somewhat more comfortable this morning when you step outside. I mean, temperatures, yeah, they're still mid and a couple of upper 70s around here, but these numbers, dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, just to compare Air. Yesterday, everybody was well up into the 70s. Now it's still 70 in Seguin, but we were at 72. So our dew points dropped down six degrees, which when you talk about the dew point and the humidity, that makes a heck of a lot of difference. So it's not as though it's pushing back as you walk outside. Not until the humidity is pushing back. Mold is on the low side, and throughout the rest of the morning, uh, temperatures will stay fairly steady, uh, fluctuate a couple of degrees here or there. Wind out of the southeast today, 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's going to be warming up very quickly throughout the rest of the morning, and we'll have, again, a couple of morning clouds around here, and then plenty of sunshine by noon, up to 90, and add 10 to that. Now, we didn't hit 100 yesterday. Small victories, 98 degrees, but we're going to be up there again today. And once again, one or two of those uh, little stray showers around here. Last weekend of June coming up, and boy, it's going out in style like all the month has been up to this point. Then next week, yeah, some changes. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? Uh, not a whole lot, Mike. It has been another quiet morning on the roadways. 37 at Fair Avenue, looking pretty fair out there. But let's get a look around town and see what you can expect for that early morning 
morning drive. We know more folks are waking up with us this early, getting their day started. Maybe grab that cup of coffee or breakfast taco, but pack your patience because it does look like it is getting just a tad bit busier out there. So let's get a look at the map because we showed you a crash over on the southeast side near 37. Thankfully, that has cleared out and now we are just seeing a lot of those active construction spots and keep in mind some of those crews either maybe wrapping up or just getting their morning started out there. So we'll likely see more uh, work trucks again working to make the roads a better place uh, for everybody. But let's take a look at those travel times. If you're going to be heading into the Alamo City, we're still seeing a lot of green here. So if you are coming in from Pleasanton, it is a pleasant drive with 28 minutes on I-37 northbound. And if you're coming in from Highway 90 and Castroville to downtown San Antonio, we see it about half an hour at this point. And your arrival from Lytle should be at about 16 minutes on I-35 northbound coming in. So right now, no trouble there as we bring you back to Transguide. The morning is up. People are moving. We'll take a look and see what we can expect for your morning commute coming up a little bit later on. Jonathan Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Now to more developments this morning in the Uvalde school massacre investigation. The school police chief is now off the job as a new lawsuit is filed demanding more transparency in the investigation. Mona Kosar Abdi has the story. This morning, the embattled school police chief in Uvalde, Texas, has been placed on administrative leave. Bravo. It's about time. He should never be allowed to work in law enforcement again. As more law enforcement agencies face criticism for their response to the massacre at Robb Elementary last month. We deserve the truth and we deserve answers and we deserve them now. Some critics now demanding P. Arredondo resign after learning that he entered the school just minutes after the gunman. But for more than an hour, he and his officers delayed entry into the classroom where 19 students and two teachers were killed. Arredondo has said he did not consider himself in charge at the time the massacre was unfolding. Multiple agencies also responded, including the Uvalde Police Department, the Texas Department of Public Safety, U.S. Border Patrol, and the U.S. Marshal Service. And now State Senator Roland Gutierrez is suing the Texas Department of Public Safety after the agency denied his request for records related to the shooting. I want to know where the officers were on site, where they situated themselves, who they were listening to, which orders they were taking. Uh, body cam information if it's necessary. On Monday, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety testified in front of state lawmakers. The officers had weapons. The children had none. Stephen McCraw said his agency's investigation found the response led by Arredondo was an abject failure. But Senator Gutierrez wants to know why McCraw's troopers also failed to act sooner. We found out that there was 91 DPS troopers, all Operation Lone Star, including their commanders. Twelve of them were in that hallway for periods of time and apparently listened to no one other than was walking in and out of there. The Texas Department of Public Safety did not immediately respond to the lawsuit. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we sit down with a fourth grade student who is going to the Resiliency Center in Uvalde. She talks about the day that changed her life forever and she shares how she is making sure the victims are not forgotten. You can listen to the story of 10-year-old Aralia Santos tonight at 10. In your other morning headlines, the sentencing trial for the Parkland uh, school shooter Nicolas Cruz is set to start July 6th. A jury has not yet been seated. Once selected, jurors will reportedly hear from nearly 2,000 witnesses. They will then decide whether to recommend the death penalty or send Cruz to prison for life. Now, Cruz has pleaded guilty to the 2018 shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, where 17 people were shot and killed. And today on Capitol Hill, the January 6th committee will hear from former Justice Department officials who faced down a campaign from Donald Trump to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. The testimony today will aim to show how Trump tried to leverage the authorities of federal executive branch agencies in pursuing his claims of election fraud. Now we are going to be bringing you coverage of those proceedings during an ABC special report that is scheduled for today at 2 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. And the FDA is investigating another claim of an infant dying after consuming Abbott formula. This makes the 10th report of its kind. Two of those infant deaths were included in FDA's investigation of Abbott's Sturgis plant with the other seven deaths. Now, the agency said they could not find enough evidence leaking those circumstances directly with Abbott's plant and therefore did not include them in their investigation. 
Now, the FDA says they are investigating a new claim that an infant died after consuming Abbott's product in January of 2022. The agency says it will provide updates as it learns more. And happening today in California, air regulators will be discussing a plan to cut fossil fuel use. Their goal is to reach carbon neutrality by 2045. Now, today will be their first public discussion about the issue. The 2045 goal is among the most ambitious in the nation, but the plan has many critics beyond the oil industry. Some say the plan has too many bans and mandates. A wide range of environmental advocates say the plan does far too little to quickly lower planet warming emissions. Now, topping your morning consumer headlines, the warning from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, efforts to slow inflation by hiking interest rates could cause an economic downturn. Now, Powell raising the possibility in remarks before Congress. He's back on Capitol Hill today. Overnight futures pointing to lower open on Wall Street. The official summer travel season is underway and it's off to a bad start. Since the first official day of summer on Tuesday, more than 1,000 U.S. flights have been canceled. In addition, the tracking website FlightAware reports more than 3,400 have been significantly delayed. The FAA is blaming thunderstorms in the New York and D.C. metro areas. One in every seven flights departing with the Newark LaGuardia airports in metro New York were canceled. It was a similar story for D.C. metro airports, including Reagan, National, Dulles, and Baltimore. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg had asked airlines to improve their reliability this summer. And Revlon, the cosmetics company that filed for bankruptcy a few days ago, is seeing a bump in its stock price. Shares soaring over 300 percent over three days as individual investors pile in. The 2022 NBA draft is here and our San Antonio Spurs are gearing up for one of their biggest draft nights in franchise history. That's because they have three first round picks alone. And right now the silver and black hold the number nine, the number 20 and the number 25 overall picks. The NBA draft is tonight at 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. The best part, you can watch it all right here on Case at 12. At 610, 77 degrees outside. And much more to come on GMSA. A little later, we're going to tell you about a woman and her two dogs dead after they were struck by lightning. And caught on camera, the scary moment a plane lights up in flames after landing in Florida. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. And can you imagine your favorite celebrity helping you with your day-to-day -day tasks? Well, that may soon be a reality in a sense. We're going to explain right after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are starting daylight, starting to show more traffic on the roadways. But of course, we'll be checking in with our traffic authority, Steven Cabazos, in a bit. FedEx is set to provide a clearer picture of your packages. The company will send customers photos of items to prove they've been delivered. The free service will be used for packages that don't require signatures. Amazon has had a similar program for about four years now. And Twitter is testing a new feature for long form writing. It is called Notes, basically a blog post that appears within Twitter. Notes does not have character limits like tweets. Users can embed photos and videos and ramble on as long as they want. And listen to this, Amazon's Alexa may soon be able to replicate a specific human voice. Developers recently showed how Alexa can mimic a voice after hearing it for less than a minute. So if the feature rolls out, you could have Alexa sound like your favorite celebrity or late relative. I think I would go for the celebrity. Me too. Or maybe even Yoda and make it interesting. You know, Steven said... Um, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Yeah. I might have to go with Pam Anderson, maybe, oh, since yeah. we're picking. Oh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> you know what? Uh, everyone's Alexa just went off. So, anyway. Oops, sorry. Oh, good morning. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, have those phones handy for right now. We're going to get to some construction spots j in just a moment. But let's first start with a look around town. 281 at Grayson, 37 at Houston. Things are moving just fine, thankfully. We had some issues out there a little bit earlier this morning. Those have cleared out. So right now, your commute should be pretty clear as well. But we're going to 
start with that wide look at the map because we're not really detecting anything that's going to slow you down just yet. But one of the things that just popped up there, you can see it Alpha 35, a stalled vehicle. We'll check that out in just a moment. But again, getting back to those active construction spots, lots to expect. Now this one over on the I 35 on the northeast side of San Antonio, we mentioned it uh, yesterday, but it will start today overnight equipment removal from eight in the evening to five in the morning. Now drivers keep this in mind. It's going to be a single lane closure on the southbound frontage road from Pat Booker Road to Farrell Road. So this again starts overnight. So for you early bird commuters or you overnight commuters, make sure that you plan ahead. And again, now time to use those phones. Let's go ahead and open up your camera app. Tap the center of your screen by and that will take you directly to the case at traffic page. You know what it does. It takes you directly there and it'll have the latest list of closures taking place in your area and anything else that could impact your drive time. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, question. Would Dolly Parton be like singing a song or something? Jolene. Oh. Jolene. Jolene. Yes, of course. Jolene. I don't yeah. know. No? That would be nice. I'm really not belting it out because I don't want to wake people up to, to that sound. Well, but. I like I like I like <laughs> nice the quiet tone. version. Nice yeah, tone. Very nice. My <laughs> wife would be there with you with the, the okay. Dolly Parton, so it's a huge <laughs> I love that. That was a good That pick, would Stephen. be nice. All right, uh, we have got um, temperatures that are still up there, still well above normal. We're in the mid upper 70s right now. However, that top number, the dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere is at down about six, seven degrees compared to this time yesterday. So it is it's still humid, but it's a lot more comfortable and a lot less humid than what it was at this time yesterday. And also yesterday, like the past few days, there have been one or two of these stray showers and as you can see way off in the distance yes it looks kind of impressive but just a little tiny rain shaft right there and there may have been a dozen of these out there yesterday and that's going to be the situation again today okay big question why is it so hot this year compared to last year of course we do have the uh, la nina situation going on in the pacific ocean but also the ground is much much drier the drought is just horrendous out there basically we need a ton of rain obviously comparing that to last year we really didn't have as much of a drought and then you wonder what that has to do with temperatures well it takes a lot more energy to heat up moist ground than it does dry ground think of the beach um, where it's damp it's not as hot but you get in that the, you know in the afternoon the dry sand just basically burns your feet and that's kind of the situation going on right now. So the ground heats up a lot more quickly with the, the dry ground does, and that then allows things to, or helps things to really heat up that much more quickly out there again. So let me jump here. I just hit the wrong button, and let me go back to, did my computer just stick? Okay, let me go ahead. Let me do this. Here we go. Messed up here a little bit. I love computers. I know, here. Let's, let me do this real quickly. I'll do it the easy way. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now, dew point temperatures are, <laughs> it's having all sorts of fun with me right now. So dew point temperatures, like I said, have dropped down considerably compared to this time yesterday. And uh, as far as rain coming up later on today, well, we do have that chance for a couple of one or two of those showers out there. 90 today at noon, and we're going to have a lot of sunshine. Humidity is not going to be that bad later on this afternoon. That's one benefit that we have in this forecast is at least we're not going to have outrageously high heat index readings and again that 10% chance for one or two of those showers out there and we will hit 100 again today and again computer models show a few of those pop-up showers most of us are going to be seeing them off in the distance and not getting them in our backyard and like we've had the past couple of days but then we have those better rain chances coming in here in the start of next week. 90 mostly sunny skies at noon and then a high temperature today gets up to 100 yeah, we almost got it yesterday, just a stray shower or two, and um, it'll be close to it again today, and then we're going to hit it again tomorrow, and then it's going to be even hotter over the weekend. Then we get into Monday and Tuesday, so we're starting to see finally this whole weather pattern break down, and that's going to allow some better rain chances to come on in here. Also, some lower temperatures. Normal high right now, average high is 93 degrees. We're going to be in the mid to lower 90s throughout at least the first half of next week. So uh, it's been very consistent mm -hmm. for the past couple of days, all week long, as far as long range forecast, which is always a good sign. So yeah, um, this, is, this is looking good.
That is good. Yeah. I mean, the 90s feel like a break, but you say it's closer to normal. Mm -hmm. well, where it should be. Because yeah. oh, so, we're uh, going to be anywhere from 7, almost 10 degrees above normal, wow. where we have been and will be even in the weekend. All right. We'll prepare. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mike. Well, time is 620, temperatures 77 degrees. And with prices on just about everything, many people are struggling to manage their money wisely. So coming up this morning on GMSA at 9, Tiffany Huertas is going to show us a new online tool that demonstrates how families struggle to balance their budget with basic necessities. She'll also share details on programs to help struggling families. All that and more today on GMSA at 9. And still ahead on GMSA, a centuries-old discovery made in a neighborhood in Peru. We'll take a look after the break. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. Terrifying moments for a man who is the victim of a shark attack off the California coast. ABC's Wilkar has no details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a shark encounter off the California coast leaving one man with significant injuries. Good Samaritans captured on this surveillance video rushing the swimmer to shore. We had to quickly cut his wetsuit off of him and open it all up and then try to, you know, apply the tourniquets to each limb and also to his abdomen. The shark seen at Lover's Point Beach in Monterey Bay. Authorities immediately shutting the beach down, trying to track the shark with a drone, but so far, no luck. We see dolphins and whales uh, routinely, sea lions, harbor seals, uh, lots of swimmers, lots of paddleboarders, but never a shark. Experts say shark sightings are rare, but this year they're being seen earlier than usual. The water is pretty warm already for this time of year, and that's kind of unusual. And coming up at 7 a.m., more with the eyewitnesses who watched the terrifying scene unfold. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Carr, ABC News, Los Angeles. And check this out. Imagine starting renovations on a home and finding it's actually the site of an ancient tomb that dates back some 1600 years. That's the case in Lima, Peru, where archaeologists have excavated human remains in an underground tomb surrounded by silver and copper objects. Now that suggests the site belonged to an elite family from the Inca period in the 5th century. The homeowner says they didn't expect it and there could be more remains in that neighborhood. Wow, the fifth century. Yeah, very interesting. Well, with home prices, I'll take it. <laughs> right. I'll take that. <laughs> we'll take those remains as well. 626, yeah. 77 degrees outside. And still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, a woman in the hospital after she was struck by a vehicle on the city's east side. Police still looking for the driver who hit her. And support continues to pour in for the community of Uvalde. The wake of the horrific mass shooting at Bob Elementary will tell you how you can help today. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking there at I-10 at the Y and I-35 at Ben's Engelman where things are moving. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos in just a minute. The White House preparing for a high stakes meeting with the oil industry, just as President Biden is now calling for a federal gas tax holiday. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. That story coming up. And taking a live look outside with live cam, it's looking kind of hazy. The sun's starting to make its, its grand appearance. We're going to be checking in with Mike here just in a bit. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, June 23rd. Thanks for joining us today. 
Nice and, nice and hot. <laughs> nice and hot. I have to say we have to eight ounces of pomade to keep the curls down. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. Looking very nice. Works. <laughs> well, the heat. Somebody forgot to turn on TV behind you anyway. So did we not pay our cable bill? What? Uh -oh. anyway, <laughs> um, the haze may be from a little bit of the uh, African dust. We do have some of that hanging around here. But otherwise, you can see we've got some clear skies this morning and temperatures. Yeah, they're about where they've been the past few mornings, but that number dew point measure of moisture in the atmosphere is down considerably compared to yesterday by a good six, seven degrees or so. So it's not as though, you know, yesterday you walk outside and it's just like that humidity and this morning. Yeah, still humid, but not as bad. Mold is on the, uh, the low side at 490 and to slightly lower humidity. Still might need a little bit of uh, something in the hair. And then later on today, mostly sunny skies, 100. We uh, didn't hit 100 yesterday. I don't think anybody's really complaining about that. 98 officially. A uh, stray shower. We've had one or two of them every afternoon. We're going to have one or two of them again this afternoon. And then going into tomorrow and the weekend, it's going to get hotter and even hotter. We're looking at low hundreds. Now, the humidity is not going to be outrageous, but still, it's going to be pretty darn hot this weekend to uh, wrap up the last weekend of June. Then next week changes finally in this weather pattern. Some decent rain chances are coming in here and with that with, with the extra cloud cover and some other features, some lower temperatures as well. So we'll talk more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? It's been a pretty tranquil morning, Mike. Now let's get a look at the roadways 410 at Exchange Parkway. We saw some road work out there earlier on in the morning, but it looks like that is cleared out 35 near 37. Traffic is moving there, but uh, be on the lookout because the trending issue right now are going to be those stall vehicles. Uh, let's go ahead and bring you in. We showed you this one a little bit earlier in the newscast off of 35 southbound, not far from US 90, but we're going to add another stall to that list further up here off of I 10 eastbound at Hildebrand Avenue, and I think may, I may have seen another one off of 410. So stalls trending trouble of the morning. I always say this. Check those vehicles before you get out there because stalls tend to pop up around this time and hopefully people are staying alert because anytime you see a stranded motorist rolls of the road, move over or slow down. Jonathan stuff. Thank you, Stephen. In just a few hours, the Senate will take a second key test vote on the bipartisan gun safety bill. Now, it could be possible for them to pass legislation by the end of the week. Today's vote will require 60 votes to cut off debate and move toward a final vote. That vote is expected around 1130 this morning. Now to Uvalde, where Pete Erandondo is on administrative leave with Uvalde CISD police. The district is not saying whether or not he is being paid. The superintendent says he was holding off on personal decisions, but changed his mind given the, quote, unknown timing on investigation results. Several neighbors told KSAT 12 they are happy with that decision. He should never be allowed to work in law enforcement again. I, uh, my personal opinion. Bravo. About time. It's about time. It's been almost a month. And that was Uvalde resident Kimberly Hammond. She also called for Ed Adondo's removal from city council earlier this week. If he misses two more consecutive meetings, the council could vote to remove him. Also, the community continues to heal. The Uvalde Together Resiliency Center is vowing to stay open for the next five years. People in the community can get a range of personal and victim services, all while their kids play safely and get their own counseling nearby. Now, there are nine private pods for one-on-one -on -one counseling and three larger spaces for families. The center is primarily run by the Ecumenical Center and the Uvalde District Attorney's Office. Christina Mitchell, the district attorney, has been working on a more permanent space for long-term care. The county has purchased a building with the assistance of the governor's office. It was an old bank building on Main Street in, in uh, Uvalde. Now we have more information, including hours and phone numbers on KSAT.com. Just look for this story. Also happening today, more than 1,000 Texas McDonald's restaurants will take part in a fundraiser to help support the Uvalde community. Now that is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 10% of the sales will be donated to the Rob School Memorial Fund and the Ronald McDonald House Charities in San Antonio. You can take part by ordering lunch for dine-in, carry-out at the drive-thru on the McDonald's app or through McDelivery. 
And now to Washington and a planned meeting today between the Biden administration and seven CEOs of big oil companies. The White House saying it will press the executives to lower their prices and help curb painful gas prices for families nationwide. But the meeting comes after weeks of tensions between President Biden and the oil industry. ABC's Jay O'Brien reports from Washington. This morning, with gas prices surging, the CEOs of seven major oil companies called to Washington to attend an emergency meeting with Secretary of Energy Jennifer Granholm. The fact is that no president alone can control the price of gasoline, and we need more players at the table. President Biden not planning on attending the meeting today after spending weeks criticizing oil companies for raking in record profits while not ramping up fuel production. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you are paying for the product. Do it now. Do it today. Oil executives responding. The administration's push for more green energy is making the problem worse. Chevron's CEO saying the White House is wrongly vilifying big oil. According to AAA, the national average is now just under $5 a gallon, down slightly from record highs last week. In Los Angeles, Evelyn Vargas, a mom of four, still struggling. We don't know what to do because the, the prices are increasing every single day. The president now calling on Congress to give drivers a break and suspend the federal gas tax for three months, which would save drivers about 18 cents a gallon or $2.76 to fill up a 15 gallon tank. But it will provide families some immediate relief, just a little bit of breathing room as we continue working to bring down prices for the long haul. But Congress would need to approve the measure. And on Capitol Hill concerns, the move is facing stiff opposition from Republicans who call it a political ploy ahead of the midterm elections. Even some key Democrats not signaling support. I'm not a yes right now, that's for sure. President Biden is also calling on states to suspend their own gas taxes, praising states like New York, Illinois, and Colorado for either delaying or suspending their fuel tax. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And new this morning, a woman is in the hospital after being hit by a vehicle while she was riding her bicycle. This happened around midnight on Susanwood Drive. That's on the city's east side near East Houston Street and Loop 410. The woman in her 40s was taken to the hospital with a possible broken ankle. Officers tell us that the driver who hit the woman briefly stopped, but then took off. Police are still looking for that driver. And some other top stories we're following in Houston. Police say a man covered in blood was shot and killed by one of their officers. They say it began yesterday when the man was beating on a door in a neighborhood asking for help. They say he was acting erratic and said he was being chased. The man got inside an elderly couple's house and the homeowner there called police after he started fighting with her husband. A neighbor with a gun also came over to help and when police got there, the woman was covered in blood and the neighbor and suspect were fighting over the gun. The suspect got a hold of the weapon. At that point, officers opened fire, killing the man. One officer was hurt in that shootout. She is expected to be okay. Now, a woman and her two dogs are dead this morning after officials say they were struck by a bolt of lightning. It happened yesterday in town of Pico Rivera, just outside of Los Angeles. Investigators believe the 52-year-old uh, victim was out walking her dogs when it happened. Police were called after other walkers discovered them dead in the, path, in the pathway. Now, officers say these kinds of deaths are extremely rare. Six people are dead this morning after a helicopter went down in West Virginia. The FAA says it happened around 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Everyone on board the aircraft was killed. At this time, there's still no word on what the cause for the chopper to come down was. Now caught on camera, have you seen this video? It shows the moment a plane caught fire after landing at Miami International Airport. 126 people were on board the aircraft. No one was seriously hurt. Crews say the fire was caused by a collapsed landing gear on the plane. And happening tomorrow, about an hour before sunrise, when we're here at GMSA, you can check out an extremely rare solar system extravaganza, the waning crescent moon will also be in position between Venus and Mars, taking the place of Earth in the planetary lineup. Then, over the next few months, the planets will appear spread out across the morning sky. And by September, 
Venus and Saturn will not be viewable for most morning sky observers. Last time the five planets aligned was back in 2004. And the next time it will happen again will be 2040. Super cool. I was just talking to Stephen about planetary alignments. And there you go. And there we have it. <laughs> 640, 76 degrees outside. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about some dangerous TikTok trends you should be on the lookout for. And welcome back at 643. With over a billion users, TikTok is one of the most popular social media apps today. That's right. In fact, the data shows it was the most downloaded app of 2021. But not everything is fun in games. Some viral challenges can be dangerous, even deadly. RJ Marquez breaks down five terrible TikTok trends that you should know about. The cha-cha challenge doesn't sound bad, but it is. The TikTok trend encourages drivers to recklessly drive all over the road in time with music. The viral videos like this one show a coin being dropped between the prongs of a phone charger that is loosely connected to an outlet. The penny challenge has been attributed to starting several fires, including one at a high school near Boston. The Benadryl challenge is when you take 12 Benadryls to hallucinate. One teen died after taking at least 12 tablets. And last year, a 10-year-old girl passed away as a result of the blackout challenge, which encourages users to hold their breath or choke themselves to the point of losing consciousness. And the fire challenge has left several teens burned, including 13-year-old Destiny. Her family says she was prompted to spray hairspray on a mirror and then set it on fire. And one more parents should be aware of is the mouth taping challenge. TikTok users claim that putting tape on your mouth before bed will force you to breathe through your nose, reducing dry mouth and improving your oral health. But it could actually cause suffocation. TikTok has taken steps to prevent dangerous content in their new guidelines. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And well, it looks like we have problems on Loop 410 and Babcock Road. That's right. We're going to head over to uh, with Steve Cavazos. Hey, thank you, guys. Let's get a look here. 410 at Babcock, not a good place right now. Off on the shoulder lane, you can see there we have first responders. A medic uh, we're arriving to the scene. I'm going to step out because I want to give you guys a shot of what we are seeing out there. We do detect that there's are two there are two vehicles there in the shoulder lane, and you can see that we do, again, have those first responders out there helping to assist the drivers. Right now, it is not clear how many people are injured at this time or if there are any injuries. But again, you see those first responders, fire trucks out there as well. So this is not a good area right now. You can see there are a lot more folks getting out on the roadway. So we're just going to go ahead and talk about this because this is off 410 in the eastbound lanes, not far from Babcock Road. I know that we are seeing that stretch of red on the screen, so we want to give you a quick detour. It may take you a little bit longer to get to your destination, but if you are traveling in those eastbound lanes and want to avoid that red, follow the blue I've outlined for you. Exit Ingram Road, take a left at Callahan Road to Bandera, then a left at Hillcrest Drive. Now keep in mind, you're going to hit some of those stop the traffic lights, but I always like to mention it beats seeing those flashing lights out there on the roadways as we bring you back to Transguide. You can see that traffic already starting to build, not looking like a good place right now, guys. Yeah, a little backed up. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Well, definitely be safe on the roadways. It's 646, temperatures 76 degrees. Yeah, it is uh, nice and uh, not as humid as it was yesterday, but we are still <laughs> expecting heat today. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still warm out there. We're still slightly above normal with temperatures by about five, six degrees or so. And yeah, the humidity still, but it's summertime. You'd expect that. But it's a lot better than what it was. And uh, boy, a beautiful view. Notice the orangey kind of glow there. That's a little bit more uh, Saharan dust has kind of moved on in. Should be around for today and then getting on out of here by the uh, the weekend. The humidity, dew point temperatures. Again, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. We're in the 60s this morning as opposed to the low 70s. So doesn't seem like a heck of a lot, but it makes it sure makes a lot of difference. And you're going to notice that difference when you open up the door and step outside this morning. And then, yes, the dew points, the humidity will be dropping down later on today. So even though we are going to be hitting 100, it's not going to be just outrageously humid out there. And that's going to make it more comfortable, especially if you're in the shade, which again, got to emphasize that's where all the temperatures are taken in the shade. If you're out in the direct sun, it feels even hotter, obviously, because the sun's heating you up and not only just feeling the air temperature, but you're getting heated up as well. Humidity is going to come back up tomorrow morning, drop back down in the afternoon. So we'll go through that same 24 hour cycle. So here's what's going on today. We will warm up very quickly once that sun gets a little higher up into the sky, getting up in through the mid and upper 80s and then 90 at noon. Plenty of sunshine out there. 
one or two got the 10% chance one or two stray showers popping up just you know scattered about like we've had the past couple of days not going to amount to anything as far as rain is concerned and yes we are going to be hitting 100 we barely missed it yesterday which is not necessarily a bad thing got up to 98 and out there at the airport officially all right, jumping into the future Monday, we've got some showers up there to the north and again, long range models tend to you know broad brush this but what you can take away from this is the chance of rain is going to be around throughout the day especially later in the day Monday Monday night and then going on into uh, Tuesday morning overnight and throughout much of the day on Tuesday and this is going to extend on into Wednesday it won't rain constantly right now best shot would be about a 40% chance of rain on Tuesday, but it does look like it wants to extend even into later on the day on Wednesday and perhaps even into Thursday. So what's going on is that high, which is sitting on top of us. This is what we are getting real tired of. That's just kind of pushing down in the atmosphere, really preventing anything significant from forming up here, but that is going to be working its way off to the West and then starting to sort of fizzle a little bit. The high is going to shift positions. Now, as that high moves off to the west, though, this weekend, that's going to then get us into this more of this uh, northwesterly flow pulling down that front. Then next week, high center builds off to the east of us and we get these what we call easterly waves coming in here that would hopefully keep some rain chances around even into the latter part of next week. So that's kind of the wishful thinking as of right now. But the best thing to take away from it is the overall pattern we've been stuck in is starting to finally break down and starting to change. 90 at noon, 100 stray shower, just one or two of those popping up later on today. And then the next couple of days before we see the pattern change, it's going to get hot. 102 over the weekend, last weekend of June, by the way, and then some rain chances move on in here. You know, an OK chance, not a sure thing, but an OK chance of rain first half of the week and temperatures in the mid to low 90s. We will take that chance of rain. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks, absolutely Mike. mostly sunny break yeah absolutely an spf without a doubt yep right 650 76 degrees outside and taking a look outside with live cam wow beautiful shot out there sun coming up and here's a look at what's coming up on good morning america coming up on good morning america the latest on president biden's big push for a national gas tax holiday oil executives are set to meet with white house officials also how an american nuclear scientist was finally rescued after being trapped in ukraine for months what we're learning this morning that's coming up right here on gma Happening today on Capitol Hill, the January 6th committee will hear from former Justice Department officials who faced down a campaign from Donald Trump to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. We're going to be bringing you coverage of those proceedings during an ABC special report. It's scheduled for today at 2 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. Also today, the World Health Organization is talking about if the monkeypox outbreak warrants a global emergency. Some scientists believe any declaration would help to curb the epidemic. Monkeypox has sickened people for decades in Central and West Africa, and so far, no deaths have been seen outside of Africa. A reminder, our San Antonio Spurs are gearing up for one of their biggest draft nights in franchise history. That's because they have three first round picks alone. The NBA draft is tonight at 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. You can watch it all right here on KSAT 12. And have your kids wanted to try out a new sport? KSAT is partnering with the nonprofit San Antonio Sports to bring you full instructional videos to learn and practice those skills. The videos teach the fundamentals of soccer, basketball, volleyball, and track. You can find out more by visiting our website at KSET.com. All right, now it's time to see what's happening on the roadways. And for that, we're going to head over to our traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos. Hey, thank you, Jonathan. Let's get a look here. 410 at Babcock. I've been watching this area closely following a crash. Notice that we are seeing some skid marks on the roadway. Uh, so we did have a crash was reported in that area, causing some heavy traffic. But you can see a tow truck is out there on the scene. We're going to watch it closely. But for anybody that is traveling through that area, keep in mind, it's in the eastbound lanes of 410, not far from Babcock Road. We have been looking at alternative routes, and we'll continue to do that as the morning does go on. But the good news is here, Mike, we do have one of those towing trucks out there. So hopefully this will be wrapping up pretty soon.
All right, thank you very much, sir. And, uh, you know, talking about kids and sports, if you're going to be outside and with band practice coming up and all that stuff, hydrate, hydrate before you are thirsty. Just do it, you know, pre-hydration, I guess you could call it that. A lot of sunshine out there right now, 78 degrees, 68 at uh, Rio Medina, and we're going to have a high today up to 100 stray shower or two. All right, thank you, Mike. Thanks That's for everything. joining us. We'll see you back here at 9.